Team Keep It Clean, we got some bad news to talk about with all Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I am not feeling the best right now, so my apologies for that, but uh, we still had to bring this to y'all. So as if the loss to the Chiefs the other night, as if that wasn't bad enough, uh, we sustained a significant injury to a significant player, that being Kyle Vinoy. I remember when Kyle Vinoy first uh, was down on the ground, and he was just laying there. I was thinking, okay, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure what he's doing. I'm not sure what the issue is. But then he got up. And I'm like, okay, Calvin Oy got up. And then I saw one of the trainers, like, sort of messing with his eye, looking at his eye. And he was talking to the trainer about his eye, pointing at it and stuff. And I'm like, okay, so maybe he got poked in the eye or something like that. But they said Calvin Oy was questionable to return. I'm like, okay, cool. And it didn't look like anything serious. But this is why I am not a doctor let's read the report that came from steve why she said a uh, ravens outside linebacker kyle vanoy suffered a fractured orbital bone in thursday's loss to the kansas city chiefs according to a source with direct knowledge of the injury he will undergo further testing to determine how much time he will miss and see i waited for this one too when, when that news first came out i waited to see all right i know the ravens are going to be flying back to, to baltimore um so i'm waiting to see if we get any updates on anything going on with kyle Vinoy, but we have gotten nothing yet now um the issue with this is that kyle Vinoy, um he was expected to be one of our better pass rushers this year especially his uh second year with the baltimore ravens um we have adafi away who he looked better last night or well, not last night the other night uh david ajabo who he looked really good too um but outside of that we don't really have depth at pass rusher so with calvin Noy, however long he's going to be out for if he is going to be out for a little bit which it does sound like what are we going to do Where's the pass rush going to come from? Now, we know pass rushing against the Kansas City Chiefs is a different kind of pass rush because you can only send four. You can't be blitzing like crazy against Patrick Mahomes because Patrick Mahomes is just one of them guys. But what are the Baltimore Ravens going to do now? That's the concern. Um, with Kyle Vinoy, uh hopefully it's something. I, I can't even say hopefully it's minimal because, again, the injury described as a uh, a fracture to his orbital like that's that just sounds crazy man that sounds crazy itself but um with Kyle Vinoy, uh we're just hoping that he can of course get better first and foremost uh for his own sake not even just for football but for his own sake but then of course for the football team but as far as the Baltimore Ravens what do they do who do they turn to for a pass rusher? Uh, again, we talked about Adolfo Away and David Ajabo. Uh, Tavius Robinson, he could have a more of an impact. Adisa Isaac, but he's injured right now. So we'll see this week when they start practicing again if he returns to practice. Um, but it's not many options uh, currently on the team. So the Baltimore Ravens are either going to have to get really creative with their blitz packages and how they uh, accumulate pressure on these quarterbacks, uh, or they're going to have to go sign somebody. Who would that be? Well, that's the question. And speaking of questions, on a positive note, the newest Team Keep It Clean patron is my guy, Dre. Appreciate you becoming a Team Keep It Clean patron, Dre. And he sent in a question. He said, Engraving, I'm going to try to keep it short, uh, but that may not happen, LOL. I've been rocking with you for a few years now. I uh, first stumbled on your viz during the COVID NFL season, and around that time, I went through a tough deployment with the Army. You helped me through it all with the Ravens news and constant positivity, so I want to give you props for that. Uh, you never know who your kind words may affect and inspire. Congratulations on everything everything you've accomplished so far i know a lot more is in store for, for you man dre i love you man I, I i love you and i appreciate that um this is something that um thank you man like that's that's real man i i appreciate that a lot man he said now let's get to the business the reason why after all these years i decided to go ahead and get on patreon the game confirmed a lot of what i was thinking in this off season what good is having all of these weapons when the o-line is lacking I know there has to be growing pains with these young guys, but I feel like we cannot afford to be in that situation right now. Grabbing Devontae Adams or any other wide receiver, it won't be the answer until we have some quality blocking. Derrick Henry's addition was good, but at the end of the day, Lamar's got a Lamar. We can't rely on him the way the Titans did and feed him 30 carries a game. So that means we need to be able to capitalize with less volume, and that starts up front. This may sound drastic, but I think it's time uh, to make a big trade for a certified dog at right guard or right tackle. Maybe give up Bateman. Ooh. Maybe give up Marcus Williams. Ooh. Now that we have Eddie and Bo Braid. Oh, man. Um, I actually think uh, a big part of the reason why they even kept so many safeties 
is because of Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton. Uh, Marcus Williams has missed a lot of time with the Baltimore Ravens due to injuries. While Kyle Hamilton has not missed much time, we've seen uh, enough practice reports where it's like, oh, Kyle Hamilton's out. Kyle Hamilton left practice early. Kyle Hamilton didn't return to practice. Kyle Hamilton missed a couple of practices uh, due to lower leg injuries. So he hasn't missed a significant amount of time, which is great in the regular season, postseason, of course. But I think that's why they kept so many safeties, just to stay ready so they don't have to get ready. Marcus Williams has had a good amount of upper body injuries. Kyle Hamilton has had a few lower body injuries. But I think that's one of the reasons why they kept so many safeties. Anyway, continuing. Uh, he says, something's got to give. The O-line being below average affects so much more than we think. That No, that's true. You're right. You're spot on about that. Uh, he said, including the tempo of the game and what the defense has to deal with. Bottom line, we need to be in win-now mode, give up draft picks. Lamar isn't getting any younger, and we don't want all of these seasons to go by where we come within striking distance of getting the ring to come up a little short. I, I agree with that. I, I agree. That's why I feel like the Ravens should have capital. We, we ain't going to get into that right now, though. But anyway, he said, like, just a toe length short. Sorry for the long rant, but thanks for reading. And just like the ref's ability to call fair game in KC, I'm out. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, that, mm, that was ugly. Um, I'm with you. Like, Ravens, this is something that we all talked about going into this season. Ravens were playing a very dangerous game with the offensive line. They're playing a very dangerous game with the offensive line because they're doing some risky business. And so far, it, it has not looked good. Um, it hasn't been good for Lamar. hasn't been good for Derrick Henry. hasn't been good for the receivers. I mean, all of them still made their plays, but it could have just been a whole lot better and smoother and easier if the offensive line was better. So we'll see how they look next week, who they trot out there next week as a starting offensive line, and if they still continue to do the musical chairs next week. But if this isn't something that improves rather quickly, and I know they, we got to get them time to jail for sure because they didn't play in the preseason together at all, like all of them together. And I know that's been a lot of people's gripe. I know that's been a conversation. People have been saying, oh, see, this is why the Ravens need to play in the preseason. This is a big reason why. And, and, and I can't argue against that. My, my biggest argument is still the same thing. I just would hate to see somebody get hurt in the preseason. That's it. That's it. I, I get people wanting them to jail in the preseason. I get people wanting them to build that camaraderie and, and, and report in the preseason. I get that completely. Uh, but I just, I would, oh, I would hate it. But um, the Baltimore Ravens offensive line, it was an issue. Now, it's one game, so we'll see. They could completely turn around the next game. And then we'd be like, oh, wow, there they go. So we just have to see how this thing plays out. But it, hopefully it's nothing that the Baltimore Ravens end up needing to address because that would mean that everything worked out fine. But if it doesn't, then the Ravens need to find an answer and find it fast. Next question came from another team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy, Martin. He said, I think we are too hard on Bateman. I was watching the live stream and it seemed like everyone was like, Bateman is a no-show again, but hold up. How can he do anything if no balls are thrown his way? Lamar locked on to Zay Flowers and likely, which is fine. If it ain't broke, don't break it. But I just don't think it's fair to blame Bateman when he only gets a couple of balls thrown his way. But I also wonder how much of that is separation issues. I wonder if he just can't get open. I'll definitely be paying attention to that going forward. I just don't think we should blame him for the offensive struggles sometimes. No, I, I get that. And um, with Bateman, um, people just want to see him produce. Bateman showed uh, in that game that when his number was called, he picked up the phone uh, right away, which was great. Uh, he made some really big plays, especially at the very, very end. Um, but with Rashad Bateman, him and Lamar, just they're not on the same page like that still, and we can tell. Um, the, the biggest play that let us know that they weren't on the same page was the second to last play of the game because so many people got on Lamar like, oh, my goodness, Lamar, you completely missed Zay Flowers. Lamar Jackson, you missed a wide open pass. Da -da -da -da. So many people were blowing that up, and I get it especially because of the moment that it was. And I was thinking, oh, my goodness. Well, even though he had pressure, he had pre like, like he had all game. Uh, but So he had to move. He had to throw across his body. So he was, uh, it was looking like live. Oh, my goodness, he just misses Zay Flowers. That could have been a touchdown. But Lamar Jackson said after the game, it wasn't for Zay Flowers. It wasn't for Zay. He said it was for Rashad Bateman. And he said with Rashad Bateman, uh, he thought Rashad Bateman was going to cut back because Rashad Bateman had two defenders on him. So he thought Rashad Bateman was going to come back. But Rashad Bateman stopped. And... Rashad Bateman could have been so Didn't want to watch it And I seen all these people Post that all 22 of us. I said oh, okay Wait a minute That that actually was for Rashad Bateman But anyway The play obviously It, it didn't work either way um, But yeah I, I get it all, all it is that people Just want to see Rashad Bateman Produce because they see The potential They know the abilities there And they just want to see It work for the Baltimore Ravens But somebody made a really good point About Rashad Bateman And Lamar Jackson uh, Lamar does a lot of Off script stuff um, he, He's not necessarily An on time player um, But with, uh, with Rashad Bateman, he is that. 
He's not really an off script player. You see, the people that have worked the best with Lamar Jackson have been players that can adjust to Lamar Jackson and can adjust to the off script stuff. The stuff where uh, it's not necessarily timed, it's not necessarily set, it just it just ends up happening. Those have been Hollywood Brown, those have been Mark Andrews, that has been become Isaiah Likely, that has been Zay Flowers. Rashad Bateman, he's not like that. Um, can he be like that? Hey, who knows? But he hasn't been like that. So uh, they just they, they still got to work on their stuff together, man. They still got to work on their stuff together. If they can get it, if they can build that chemistry and get that chemistry going, then it's game over. Ooh, y'all sent a lot of questions. Here we go. Next question came from my guy. Mars said the tight end room needs to stay as is. I don't even need to read your question, what you wrote, because I agree. I agree. Isaiah Likely, tight end one. But anyway, let's continue. You say, that ain't great. Hope you're doing well. And today, your family is prospering. Hey, I appreciate that. He said, been a minute since I sent a question in. Do you think we should trade Mark Andrews? No, I don't. No. But he said, I say no. Uh, a lot of fans saw Mark put up a two-catch performance and said, wrap it up. Likely is tight end one. Now, that part is true. But trading Mark Andrews, no. I will keep them both as long as you can. Keep them both together as long as you can. It might not be too much longer, but... Anyway, he said, I can't help but notice uh, nobody mentions how KC hones in on taking away Mark Andrews every time we face him. I, I, or every time we face them. I did see that. I saw somebody put up a stat that Mark Andrews against the Chiefs is like his numbers look ugly every single time, every single game. And it was crazy. The best game that he had against the Chiefs where he had like five catches for, I think, like 60-something yards, that's the one that we won a couple of years ago. <laughs> anyway, he said, that's why likely it's open because Andrews is double team. Also, don't think we need to give up Andrews for any other position. We need depth at wide receiver, but our game against KC showed me real strides from Zay and Bateman. We need depth at edge, but away and Ajabo also looked better. I just think Mark is a core aspect of this team. And if he gets traded, Lamar is really going to have to carry the offense without his favorite target. He did that last year. He did that already last year when Mark Andrews was out. So the, the offense has already shown, like, they can move forward without Mark Andrews, but in my opinion, it'd be better to keep a Mark Andrews, to have a Mark Andrews, because he's one of the best tight ends in the league. And he's proven that he's one of the best tight ends in the league. So why not have two of the best tight ends in the league on the same team if you already got it? Anyway, he said... um. Uh, besides likely has been hyped all offseason as someone the Ravens want to manufacture snaps for a wide receiver we don't need to trade anyone to let him shine but yeah it, the Ravens again it, it's just one game but they we still want to see them both shine in some of the same game so that's to be determined team keep it clean just breathe next question came from my guy Melo he said it's one game and it was the first as someone who covers the team does it bother you watching the press conferences and listening to these softball baseless questions they ask the coaches or players um honestly the pressers after the game, I don't listen to them. Um, I mean, we be usually streaming on Bleacher Report. We do the post-game streams on Bleacher Report, but even still, a lot of times I, I don't listen to them. The only time I would listen to them usually right after the game is if there was a significant injury to somebody and I'm looking for the status of it. But usually the post-game pressers, I, I, I don't listen to them. Uh, but anyway, he said, uh, if you could ask one of the players or coaches who spoke last night a question about the game that they had to answer, what would it be? Oh, that's a really good question. Mm. Oh, my goodness. That's that's such a great question. Um, I would ask John Harbaugh. Um, I would say, because did Todd Monken speak? If Todd Monken spoke, I could ask him. But I would ask John Harbaugh, what are you guys going to do? Because you see that when he was called upon, he delivered. But what are you guys going to do to get Rashad Bateman more involved in the game? Because he showed that he can make some plays happen. But he just simply does not get the targets. That's what I would ask him. But anyway, he said... He, his, his question to Coach Harbaugh. He said, Coach, you clearly believe the offensive line play rotation is a successful method since you did it at the whole game. Why did you continually keep a veteran and solid backup Ben Cleveland out of this rotation after seeing the duress Lamar was under series after series? Mm. I'll wait for you while you try to justify why your personal vendetta is more important than the team's success or your franchise quarterback's safety. Ooh, you would have been petty like that. He said, at this point, I'll be walking with security out of the press room. Yeah, you would be. You would be escorted by Chad Steele immediately before you even finish that question. Uh, he said, these reporters need to apply some heat to these questions and the players and coaches should answer them. We're smart enough to see through the loss. That is probably one of the most unique questions that we've ever got on here. I appreciate that. That, was, that. That's a fun one. But um, and that's a good question. Like with Ben Cleveland, it's I don't know what it is. I don't I don't know what it is. Apparently, um, I, I've seen where and we talked about it before on here, too, where Sarah Ellison, she had asked Jeff Zrebic about it. And he basically alluded to the, the, the coaches feeling like Ben Cleveland does not work hard enough, that he may even be a bit lazy. So I, I don't know. But um, 
it just it's something with Ben Cleveland to where they will not play this dude. They are not feeling this dude for whatever the reason is, but we have no clue. Shaking my head. This next question came from TJ. He says, shaking my head, the same old Ravens and same old keep it clean refs. Oh, he was putting a little word in there, but he put clean, keep it clean instead. Uh, they look terrible all the way around. Now, I wouldn't say terrible all the way around at all, um, but the refs. It did play a big part in that, but I, what I did appreciate, it sucks that nothing is going to be done and nothing can be done because the game's already over, but so many people, so many high-profile people who have played in the NFL, who've been around the NFL, they highlighted how the Kansas City Chiefs, had, they get away with literally everything. They get away with so much, and the Boston Ravens got away with nothing. Uh, he also said, when we played them again in the AFC Championship, we got to beat them to the point that nobody or nothing can stop the beating. Not even the refs can stop this beating. We got to do the same, do, the, do, do them the same way we did the Patriots. Yes, I agree. He said, uh, beat they, you know what, to the point of no return. No talking, just a good old-fashioned butt kicking. God bless the family in the channel. <laughs> what a way to end it off. Who's in our way? Next question came from my guy, Rashawn. He said, what's up, Engraver and the team? Keep it clean. Can someone explain to me how the Chiefs are in our way of getting to and winning the Super Bowl? I keep hearing analysts say that the Chiefs are in our way of the Super Bowl, but here are the teams that we have lost to in the playoffs since 2018. Well, first, before we get into that, the Chiefs are in a way because the Ravens have not been able to consistently beat them. What, the Ravens are 1-5 and five against them, I believe, in this Lamar era? They won in five against them. So, and I mean, last year you had the best team in the world and you lost to the Chiefs. And the Chiefs have been the team that have been winning all these Super Bowls. And they in the AFC. So, yeah, I would definitely say the Chiefs are in the Ravens' way for sure. But anyway, he said, um, here are the teams that we have lost to in the playoffs since 2018. Uh, the Chargers, the Titans, the Bills, the Bengals, and the Chiefs. I forget about that Bengals one, but that was that Tyler Huntley one. He said, we have only played the Chiefs once in the playoffs, and the only one that was in our way of winning that game were the Baltimore Ravens. Everyone always wants to say that what you do in the regular season does not matter. Show me what you can do in the playoffs. So why is losing to the Chiefs in the regular season them getting in our way of the Super Bowl? Personally, I'd rather lose to them every year in the regular season if that meant we were beating them in the playoffs. Sorry for that long rant, but I'm just a little confused by the narrative. Also, did Nate Wiggins play last night? <laughs> Y'all got some nice little one-liners to end off your questions. But yes, he did play. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's why uh, we feel like the Chiefs are on the way Because they, they have been the team in the AFC They've been a team to beat in the AFC I, I, get, you, you, I, I get where you're coming from Because you're being like technical with it like, like technically, they haven't been in our way Because we lost to all these other teams in the playoffs But the Chiefs have been the team in all these AFC championships In all these Super Bowls They've been doing a whole lot of winning and if Ravens are going to get to the Super Bowl, then you got to be better and beat the Super Bowl champions who are on the AFC side, that being Kansas City. Jeezy, next question came from Jeezy Montana. He said, team, keep it clean. Shout outs to all my Ravens and fingers crossed for a healthy season. Longtime Ravens fan. I first started watching them because of Ed Reed. Shout out to Ed Reed, man. The best ever Ed Reed had a little snippet where he was talking to Kay Adams About how to stop Patrick Mahomes And he said just be around who Patrick Mahomes likes to throw it to He said Travis got his guys who he always gonna throw it to Y'all gotta be around there And Ed Reed was like alright if you throw it to this guy You are gonna have to throw it by me So it sounded really simple But anyway he said it's a weird backstory I'll share one day on how he became a fan of the Ravens Because of Ed Reed He said but in my opinion uh, the first play the Chiefs scored was a trick, desperate play. I'll take that, understood. For us to have to play 18 on 11, the same 11 players Chiefs with new Zebras teammates. <laughs> well, uh, we almost won with the new O-line with zero games played. They did give us a strip sack, or give up a strip sack, excuse me. But after Lamar gave them an earful, things were pretty good. Together along with Derrick Henry not being a factor. Am I being biased or am I wrong? One more thing, kudos to Zach or with applying per, uh, with applying personnel, not getting Mahomes comfortable all night. Oh, applying pressure uh, i think isaiah likely has emerged as lamar's favorite target and could be tight and won by the end of the season end of the season he's there already he said am i jumping the gun please share your thoughts and opinions with me proud ravens fan appreciate you man um so with the uh yeah it was a trick play it was a trick play but chiefs they, they run a lot of trick plays they run so much misdirection plays they have you thinking he's going to the left when it's going to the right vice versa they do a lot of that so that was to be expected that they was going to bring some stuff out but hey it ended up working on the ravens so kudos to them uh, having a Chiefs playing with the with the Zebras, oh uh, yeah, we yeah we already know. Now with the offensive line, you're right, they did not play together all preseason. This is the first time they all played together, and they did give up that strip sack. Um, but yeah, Lamar had a talking with them, and hmm, it was still bad. It, it was still rough all night. Um, but again, hopefully they can just continue to improve. Or the Ravens gonna have to make some moves there. Now, yeah, Derrick Henry was not a big factor in the game last night. 
Uh, but something that he was a big factor in was something when we talked about this and I was worried about it was just him giving away or the Baltimore Ravens giving away what they're doing. Derrick Henry's on the field. OK, it could be 50 50 run. Or no, I would say seven, last in that game. I say it was about 80 20 uh, run pass when Derrick Henry's on the field, maybe 70 30. Well, when Derrick Henry's off the field, it's like 99 to one pass run. So it's, it's like it becomes super obvious that they're not running when Derrick Henry is off of the field. That's how it was for the first game, at least. Um, but yeah, with Zach Orr, yeah, he was he did his thing. He did his thing, and he did enough for the Baltimore Ravens to win. Just the offense, the offense, um, they they came up a bit short. They came up inches short, really. Um, and who knows what would happen if they would have went for two? I know when we were doing a live stream, I was saying I would just kick the field goal, play for overtime. But I understood a lot of people saying that they would just go for two, try to win it. Um, and some people made a good point that the Chiefs' defense they were tired, they were gassed. So Ravens could have tried to take advantage of that with a two point conversion, try to ice. I mean, not ice them, but try to win the game and put it away. Uh, so, but that's unfortunately one of the things that we'll never find out. Question came from Hard Heavy. He said, "Hope all is well." Oh yeah, think things are pretty good overall. He said, "I think it's been pretty obvious who came down to Florida and who didn't in the off season with Lamar. I don't see likely as tight end one. I think he is wide receiver one. Mm. Do you believe that Mark is just getting back, getting his feet back under him, and he can still be a force as tight end one, or is it looking like this is Mark's last year or so as a Baltimore Raven? That's uh, such a great question." I wouldn't have Isaiah likely as wide receiver one. You can move him around and wide receiver stuff, but you got to say flowers for that, and then you can still go get one. But anyway, um, Isaiah likely is tight end one. Mark Andrews, I do still think he getting just back to the, the, the thick of things, especially I, I think he's still dealing with an injury because um, he just – I think he's just still a little bit off, just a little bit off. But I think this is Isaiah likely. This is, He's a tight end one now. He He's a captain now. That's That's the wrap. And Baltimore Ravens do not need to change it. Now, that last part of your question is it looking like it's Mark's last year as a Baltimore Raven. Mm. I think if they make it official, like Isaiah likely is tight end one, and you start seeing it in the snap counts and just the involvement in the games throughout the entire season, um, I could see uh, Mark Andrews, if he's taking a back seat to Isaiah likely, I could see him requesting a trade. Not a no beef with the Ravens or nothing, but respectfully being like, okay, well, I, I think – I would like to be somewhere else. I like to play somewhere else. I want to be the number one tight end for a team that I know I can be. I can see something like that happening. Or you can see the Ravens even looking at it like, hey, Mark Andrews, thanks for everything. Isaiah Likely, we're going to roll with him. We, we're paying you a lot of money, so I think it's best that we, we move you. We move you to another team. You can get more opportunity and whatnot. Uh, thank you for everything that you've done for the Baltimore Ravens. You have been phenomenal for us as a tight end. Next question came from my guy, Jonathan. He said, I ain't graven. Hope all is well, and the family is doing good. And I hope Raven Nation is doing good, too. First off, what a game. It's safe to say that I was very proud of the guys last night. Yes, we lost, but to lose a game like that by a toe made me really satisfied with the team. And I woke up in a great mood today, but let's address some things. This is going to be a long one. Oh, my goodness. I'm looking through it, and it sure is. So he said, the defense looks great. I wouldn't say great, but anyway, he said, Oway and Ajabo compliments each other as well. Uh, with Matabike drawing a lot of interior attention, allows those two to floor. It's really good. They looked really good out there. I agree with that part. Uh, he said, Trent Simpson, awesome player, did great in coverage and was flying all over. Compliments Roquan as well. Uh, compliments Roquan well. Yeah, he needed to be out there more, though. He needed to be out there a lot more. Uh, he said, defensive backs, lots of question marks with the personnel and adjustments. Pers personally, I think Wiggins and Stevens should be outside and have Humphrey in the slot and some packages to cover tight ends. Speaking on Humphrey, after looking at the All-22, Humphrey was supposed to be in man on that touchdown to Worthy. If you look at the defense, all the corners were in man. Even when that motion man came across, the motion man was followed by a Ravens player. Oh, really? Oh, so they were in man? So that was on Hump? I didn't think it was, but if it was, then, hey, I guess I was wrong. He said, that motion man was followed by a Ravens player. There was one single high safety. Humphrey cheated with his eyes, seeing the motion man in the flats. He left Worthy thinking if he cheated, he would have that safety. But <laughs> that wasn't the outcome. I may be wrong, but how I see it on that play and the way it was developed, it looked like Humphrey was wrong. Oof, yikes. That'd be a big yikes. Uh, he said, but overall, the defense looks solid. Great job on adjustments as well. Now to the offense. The 12-man personnel with Likely and Andrews on the field together look solid. Andrews looks sluggish. But I know he will be back to form. I will need him for uh, the twelve man personnel to work, and I believe twelve man personnel, um, twelve personnel is when you have two tight ends, two wide receivers, and one running back. But y'all X's and O's people, correct me if I'm wrong, because I just may be. He said the running attack with Lamar and Henry looks deadly, like pick your poison deadly. If they get that offensive line right, it will be. Lamar's running attack looked deadly. Derrick Henry, he he came close a couple times, but he obviously he got caught. Um, but if the offensive line improves, then yeah. Anyway, he said, uh, Zay Bateman was solid to me, yeah. Uh, but for that to jail to work fluently, we need to fix a major problem. Like now, offensive line is trash, really trash, and let's look deep. Here are some names. 
Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, Demarcus Lawrence, Michael Parsons, Ed Oliver, Von Miller, Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen, Joey Bosa, Khalil, Mac Bud Dupree, Will Anderson, Daniel Hunter, Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, Brandon Graham, Dexter Lawrence, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau uh, with Steelers front seven, Browns front seven, Bengals front seven, twice this year, which includes TJ Watt, Miles, Gary Trey Hendrickson. We struggled with one guy last game named Chris Jones. Majority of these opponents have two or more players which can cause havoc. My question is, do you think we should trust the process of musical chairs offensive line <laughs> since it's only week one or make some moves now with some vets that are sitting out there or even trades? Oh, I love that thinking. And that's the, that's the question that we had earlier too. Who are the Ravens going to bring in an offensive line? Who should they trade for? Uh, so, yeah, a lot of same thinking from Team Keep It Clean, which we understand. Why? He said, if it was up to me, I would make trades and sign some guys. The only hope we have is Tyler Linderbaum. Voorhees and Falele is not it at guard. Stanley for his price tag. I don't mind him, but left guard, right guard, right tackle, and he's upgrading now. What do you think? Again, sorry for the long one. No apologies necessary at all, Jonathan. Um, yeah, like we said, with the offensive line, um, it's a work in progress. I don't think Ravens will make any moves immediately. I think they will wait. They will really wait like a couple more games to really see how this offensive line does. Um, but you're right. You made such a great point about what we have coming up uh, and the pressure. Uh, and even, even in the game against the Chiefs, Chris Jones, Carl Loftus too. He was, Carl Loftus was getting after it, man. He really was. So it wasn't just Chris Jones. Chris Jones was obviously killing us, but Carl Loftus did his thing too. So, um, yeah, Ravens are going to have to face even more people uh, with good front sevens. And with the all current offensive line, it looks like that's going to be a problem. But hopefully they can get better. Hopefully – they can jail, but if they do not, then yeah, Ravens need to address that for sure. Now, this next question came from my guy Clyde, but Clyde, in the future, please send it to the correct email, teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. But we'll get you past this time because the Ravens, since the Ravens lost, I know your, your, your mind space wasn't in the, you weren't in the right headspace. So you sent it to the wrong email, but next time just send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Anyway, he said, good morning. Good morning. Praying you and the family are doing good. Uh, blessings and prosperity to you and yours. I appreciate that, man. He said, it's ironic how the refs called illegal formation constantly on Ronnie Stanley, but not once against the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, Is that ironic? Coincidence? Hey, who knows? But my question is, likely is looking like Lamar's go-to guy. Could this mean Andrews will be taking a back seat, or is he still dealing with an injury from the accident? Sorry for the long message. I have more, but we'll save it for another time, mainly our offensive line. <laughs> um, actually, both. Both. You said, my question is, is likely looking like Lamar's go-to guy? Yes. Uh, could this mean Andrews will take a back seat? Yes. Uh, or is he still dealing with injury from the accident? Yes. I think yes to all three for sure. Um, so this is Isaiah Likely's team now as a tight end. Uh, that doesn't mean Mark Andrews cannot and will not be involved. He should be. He should continue to be involved for sure because Mark Andrews is Mark Andrews. And when he gets right, oh, yeah, it could be a nice, nasty problem for the rest of the NFL. But especially, like, even when he gets right, though, it still needs to be Isaiah Likely tight end one. Next question came from my guy Aaron. Aaron, please. Next time. And, again, I know – Dealing with the Ravens' loss. It had a lot of us thinking crazy and whatnot. But next time, please send it to the right email. Team, keep it clean at gmail.com. Anyway, Aaron said, yo, Engraven, how's it going? It's going it's going good overall. He said, I hope all is well with you and your daughter. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. He said, Ravens have an 0-1 record so far this season. They have shown flashes of brilliance, but they have also been inconsistent with scoring chances. The next 16 games will be crucial for the Baltimore Ravens. They will need to find a way to win on the road and against tough opponents. Can they do it? And if they do, yeah, of course they can. Like, last year, I, I was thinking about this the other day. Ravens lost, what, four games last year? Two of them against the Steelers, so that was one home and one away. Um, another game was against the Browns at home, and another game was against the Colts at home. So three out of their four losses came at the crib. When they were away, they did their thing. They lost one game on the road. One game. Even the, the playoff loss, it came at home. They lost more games at home than they did on the road last year, which is crazy. So, yeah, they can get it together on the road. They'll be fine. He said, uh, if they do, what's the best way to get them out, all out of it after a heartbreaking loss? To win, straight up. And I know that sounds like uh, such a basic statement of basic answer, but that's it, to win. Best way to get over, uh, over a loss? Win. I told y'all, y'all really brought it, this episode. Uh, next question came from my guy, Flirt Nowinski. Well, I ain't heard from you in, woo, it's been forever. But I hope you're doing good, my friend. Uh, he said, y'all know the drill, sit back and relax, LOL. Hope all is well with you and yours. I hope all is well with you. I remember when you got your promotion, you got the, the, the window view at your job and whatnot. I hope you're doing real good, my friend. Anyway, he said, well, why have soldiers if you're not going to use them? Quote from Hollywood Brown. He said, we got Henry to have him on the bench in crutch time. Arguably the best back in the NFL. Madness. We could have kept Gus for a fraction of the price. You know, they, they, they were ready to move on from Gus. They never respected Gus fully. 
And Gus was probably ready to move on from them too. No bad blood or nothing, but just get a better opportunity elsewhere. He said, big, up, big ups to Justice Hill, man. He was blocking his butt off amazing because he's quarter the size of Chris Jones. And Henry is almost the same size as Chris Jones on the bench. But anyway, ooh, a little, little shade there at the Ravens. But yeah, shout out to Justice Hill for real. He did his thing. Aside from that, bro, I'm not going to lie. This game got me feeling like we can win out. I'm not a moral victory dude, but how could you not be happy about this game? See, that, that's what I was saying. But anyway, he said, I know that sounds crazy, but man, they did what they wanted when they wanted to until they couldn't because Lamar has to read the defense, drop back, find the open man while evading at least two people within the first second of snapping the ball. Yes. And he said, New Year, same old story, no offensive line with Lamar adding to his highlight tape because of the lack of the offensive line. I wonder when the front office is going to say enough is enough. Ooh, that's such a great question. We all wonder that same thing. And we just hate to see the Ravens treat the offensive line um, like they do because they have a quarterback like Lamar Jackson. We hate it. Uh, we get it. It happens around the league a lot where, where teams will be like, oh, this quarterback can run. Our quarterback can run, so we ain't got to really do much to the offensive line. We can get by with whatever. Don't do that, man. Anyway, he said, great read by Lamar, regardless of what people say. Uh, sc scramble drill, you set on the pocket uh, of the zone until you, unco you uncover the wide receiver one-on-one. If you look at the play, he was running right. If Lamar would have thrown it straight to him, it would have definitely been picked. But the media pushes a missed pass, but we know how that goes. Oh, yeah, same old uh, bait makes the best of his chances. Big screen, Zay likely making the best of his chances. My question is, how do you feel about the defense, bro? Or's first game was almost perfect to me for your first game against the Chiefs? One blown coverage, but Orr isn't on the field, so that's that. Last two games the Chiefs played us is something I noticed. Uh-oh, what, what did he notice? But, yeah, I did feel like Zach Orr did a good job, especially, like you said, for that being his first game. He said, somehow, they always find a way to get Kelsey on Stevens. He constantly cooks him. Genius by Andy Reid because we can't blame the defensive coordinator. Two different ones, two different games. Same target, but a coincidence? I ain't think about that. I did see, like, Travis Kelsey doing Brandon Stevens nasty. I mean, Travis Kelsey be doing a lot of people nasty. But, yeah, he was getting Brandon Stevens. That's a tough cover for him. Because Brandon Stevens got the speed to keep up with him, but the size, it's, it's, it's a mismatch, man. Anyway, he said, uh, Namdi had a rough in the past while 74 was lined up in the backfield and false started before the play, so that sucks. Oh, he was that, that was one of the plays where he false started too? Oh, boy. Did you see Simpson, though? He's looking like the new Hamilton. Man, he was flying around, no shade of PQ, but it's looking like what we thought we had in Peanut and PQ. I know it's just one game, but what he showed are things that they haven't really done ever. Just saying, what are your thoughts on having Harrison in coverage and knowing he's a thumper? Oh, that is frustrating. That was frustrating. They, they, shout out to Malik Harrison, though. He is a thumper, but, yeah, he don't need to be in pass coverage. That's not his specialty. You need to take put Trent Simpson where Malik Harrison uh, would be at. Uh, he said, and can't cover a kicker? Uh, now, that I believe Zach Orr was tripping. What are you talking about? And can't cover a kicker? What are you talking about? He said, last but, uh, but not least, I do believe they figured out something, and I do believe it's going to be dangerous. They just letting the rushers flow up the field, and guess what? It was gold. Uh, it's more than one way to skin a cat. Usually you have a smooth I'm out joke, but I can't because they threw flags every play on us when 74 was literally lined up in the backfield and getting out of his stance before the ball was snapped. Every passing play, that's how I knew when they were passing. But only two calls? I'm out. Oh, yeah. It was a nasty game from the refs for the Chiefs. We had just finished, and we literally just got this question from my guy, Keontae. He said, I went thrift shopping and picked up a Reebok Willis McGahee jersey. Next game, I will be rocking old school. Oh, shout out to Willis McGahee, man. That dude was a beast for the Baltimore Ravens. It's crazy. A lot of times I forget that he played for the Baltimore Ravens. I forget that a lot. Thanks for the nice reminder, though. He said, but my question to you is, do you think Todd Monkin is kind of iffy with his play calling? I feel like he is still running a college scheme with all the dinking and dunking from the first game. I think you have to dink and dunk when you, you ain't got no protection from the offensive line. So you got to try to draw the defense up with the short passes, short passes, short passes, short passes, so you can catch them off guard with the deep ball. 